So let's here start the first parameter, which is water pH. It starts with you from your drinking water bottle till we go to the front water systems. So let's define the meaning of pH and how we can measure it together. Simply, we identify pH as is the measurement used to specify the acidity or basicity of an aqueous solution. In our case, it's going to be water. And also on the other side, it's going to be defined as the decimal logarithm of the reciprocal of the hydrogen ion productivity okay in a solution so simply let's assume that this is the water dis dissociation so it's h2o it's going to dissociate to h plus and oh minus then as we discussed in previous session there is something called ion product of water kw which equals the molar concentration of hydrogen ions multiplied by the molar concentration of hydroxide ion OH minus. This is a simplification, but actually it, it's not molar concentration, but in reality it's ion uh, activity. But for simplification, instead of writing AH plus, we just represent um, KW in the molar concentration of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. So KW sometimes it's called dissociation constant, it's called the ion product water the same kw has two different meanings so this dissociation constants equal to 10 to power minus 14 unit list okay what's the importance of this uh, molar concentration we use this kw and molar concentration to identify the ph which is the power of hydrogen you can see here that ph equal the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion activity so minus log a h plus or equal the logarithm of one over the activity of uh, hydrogen ion and sometimes we can just represent ph equals the negative logarithm or uh, the molar concentration of h plus so it's going to be instead of a a h plus it will be just parenthesis with h plus so this is the exact mathematical definition of pH as a power of hydrogen. So based on this definition, we can see that the pOH equals pKW minus pH. pKW is the logarithm of KW, dissociation constant of water or ion product of water. And that means if I have the pH of water, so let's assume that the pH of water is 7, which is unitless. That means the pOH is going to be 7 because the pKW of water is 14. So here will be 14 minus 7 that the pOH, pOH of water is 7. Now, let's see the scale of pH. The scale of pH when we measure any any type of water when we measure the ph here we can see that a water or a ph has a scale between 0 to 14 and between 0 to 7 we call it, this part is an acidic part and from 7 to 14 we call it the alkaline part so simply we can see that if we get a water sample and we have a ph meter uh, to uh, using the, any type of electrode like glass electrode or others we can get a water pH, pH for example at 6 which is a bit acidic water and the pOH on the other side will be 14 minus 6 which is equal 8 okay generally you don't use pOH except in researches but in our daily activity we just represent a water pH or any type of pH for solutions for soil and others so it's a scale between 0 to 14 and we will see some examples from our daily life about different medium different solutions with different ph as well so this is the ph scale as we can see here so from 0 to 7 it's going to be an acidic part and from 7 to 14 it's going to be an alkaline part and generally most of the drinking water will be ranging between 6 to 8 so it's going to be uh, in the neutral range 
And let's see some examples of the acidic part. When we talk about battery acid, which is sulfuric acid, so we expect the pH is less than one, so almost cl close to zero of concentrated sulfuric acid or even concentrated hydro hydrochloric acid. Then at the pH one, which is like stomach acid, the stomach acid has a very strong acidity over there. And when we discuss lemon, for example, lemon has a pH of between two to three or between one to two depends. So approximately it's around two uh, because it's even acidic. When we see vinegar as well, vinegar pH will be between two to three, depends on the concentration. When we know that tomato is a bit acidic, so it has a pH between four to five in that range. So if you measure the pH of uh, water ha has a tomato paste, it's gonna be in this range around pH. And for example, coffee has a pH a bit acidic between five plus minus. When we see milk as well, it has a pH around close to six. Then if you want to go to the alkaline side, we can see that blood has a bit alkaline pH as a buffered alkaline pH close to eight. Uh, value then we can see that the baking soda when we dissolve it with, with water we have we may get a pH between 9 to 10 depends on the concentration also stomach tablets uh, which is called sometimes magnesium milk or magnesium hydroxide it has an alkaline pH which is gonna neutralize any acidity in the stomach so whenever you have a stomach acidity you can get those stomach tablets which is based on magnesium hydroxide sometimes and if we have ammonia solution it will be a bit high alkaline so the pH is plus to around 11 to 12 and for example most of the soups will the pH will be between 11 to 12 as well if you know bleaching agents bleaching agent has a pH between uh, 12 to 13 and finally drain cleaner which has which has high alkaline materials such as potassium hydroxide and sodium carbonate it's highly alkaline material so it has a pH around 14 here there's a very very important point sometimes I measure the pH and I get a value and you measure a pH and you get another value why if we are analyzing the same water, I analyze the water in the field and I get, I get pH 7.5. Then you analyze the water in the lab and you get something else different. Why? Because simply pH is temperature dependent. So when we have a difference in temperature, we will have a different in pH measurement. Why? Because as you see, this is the water dissociation. So it's H2O, it dissociates to H plus and hydroxyl OH minus, hydroxyl ion. And simply, when the temperature increases, the dissociation from H2O to the ions will be higher. That means the pH will be affected because we have more and more H plus. That means the pH will go down gradually. So for example, here let's compare between pH zero to, and P, uh, between temperature zero and temperature 25. You can see at temperature zero, the pH is 7.47. But when we increase the temperature to 25, the water dissociation will be higher, as you can see here from the constant, from 0 0.2, 0 0.11 to 1, almost. So the pH went down from 7.47 to 7. The same if we increase the temperature between from 25 to 100 degrees Celsius, you can see the KW, the ion product, the dissociation constant is increasing from 1 multiplied 10 to the power minus 14 till uh, 51.3 but multiply power to minus 14 so here since the dissociation is taking place more and more we have more hydrogen ion that means we have a lower pH that means it's a more acidic and acidic so here it's gonna be the pH around 6.14 this is a very very important fact so if somebody analyzed the sample in the field of, of of a boiler sample and the temperature of the sample was 50 degrees celsius 
he's gonna get a pH around 6.6 .6, but once he transfer the sample to the lab and it's gonna be cool there so the pH will be 7 for the same sample so we have a bit uh, difference between those two cases between 6.64 and or 6.3 till, till 7 so keep that fact in mind when you want to convert pH between two cases you need to consider and take care of the temperature this is a very important factor now there are some instruments pH meters can uh, already do what we call it an auto correction of the temperature so for example you have a sample and you measure that sample at 50 degrees Celsius so it does the instrument itself does an auto correction for the temperature to gives you the pH at 25 or 20 degrees Celsius but some other instruments doesn't have this option to, of auto correction so always Keep in mind, when you analyze a pH sample, when you analyze pH of a water sample, you need to take care of the temperature. Don't compare a high temperature sample pH with a low temperature sample pH. If the temperature is identical, we expect to have an equal pH value. Hope you understand this part of pH. pH is used in all water systems. It's a key factor in cooling system. It's a very important parameter in water desalination. It's a key factor to optimize your wastewater treatment plant. It's an important factor for drinking water. It's an important factor in boiler and steam generation system. It's an important factor for any system having water so keep that fact in mind and whenever you need to elaborate more and more you can go to youtube and search more about ph but what i give you here is the basic understanding of this ph and at least you know now that it's a scale between 0 to 14 between 0 to 7 it's going to be acidic between 7 to 14 it's going to be alkaline and these are the main thing you need to know it here and we discussed also some examples about acidic and alkaline media we find it in our daily activities thanks and see you in the next parameter